Hello and welcome to the Successful Invisible. This is a react video, but it's a reaction to more of a current situation that many of you have probably seen and had thoughts upon going on in the social media world. But also I am going to reference different videos that I saw the opinions to and give you some insights from myself as a coach, as a black woman who's actively dating and just overall takeaways. So a few weeks ago, I think it's been about two weeks now, and I wanted to really wait and sit on my feelings for this, process them, speak to friends, et cetera, both male and female before I came out with this. And it is New Year's Eve when I'm posting this. And so we're going into a new year, and I think this is a great time to actually post it. So back to what's going on. A few weeks ago um, on a podcast, the Pivot Podcast, Simone Biles the most decorated, I believe, Olympian, but specifically most decorated gymnast in history, Olympic gymnast in history, including four gold medals, was on there with her husband, Jonathan Owens, who is an NFL player. Now, the Pivot Podcast is hosted by three gentlemen who are all retired NFL players. Ryan Clark, who's also a Super Bowl winner, and I think played for like 12 or 13 seasons. Fred Taylor, who was had a very prolific career. Um, he played for 12 or 13 seasons, I believe. And Channing Crowder. Channing Crowder played for around the same amount of seasons, but he's kind of like the comic relief of the show. He's he's actually, if you've watched it and I've watched Pivot many times, you see that he's actually more mature than he may let on to, but he is the comic relief, I would say, of the three of them. So during the show, of course, you know, they have a lot of athletes and people who are just current personalities in pop culture on as well, but mainly they do have a lot of athletes on. They The question was posed once they did a little background on Jonathan, Channing Crowder posed the question to Jonathan Owens, how did you pull Simone Biles, right? And Jonathan answered, actually, she pulled me. And he went into kind of to this description about how there was this dating app that they were on and she liked him first. And when he swiped on her picture and, you know, she did a lot of things in pursuit of him. That is the way he was making it sound. All three of the gentlemen on the Pivot podcast, just as a side note, are married men and they've all been married many years to their wives and they all have kids and they are, they're quite mature in a lot of ways. I mean, they have their moments because, okay, they're men. But I would say a lot of times they have really great, a really great ability to reflect and to match the energy of the, their guest. Now, in the case, Jonathan, I believe, is 28 years old. So he's kind of a young guy. All of these gentlemen are in their early 40s, maybe mid 40s. They've played football. They know the game. They did all the things when they were, you know, really out there in the in prime time. And I believe the ho one of the, the main hosts, I call him the main host, is Ryan Clark, because he kind of kicks everything off and keeps things really organized. He's been married about 20 years to his wife and he has near adult or young adult children. So Jonathan is saying this in a room full of grown men. I say that to say that, you know, and I think a lot of the kind of teasing they were doing as a woman, okay, I'm looking at it like, oh, but, you know, speaking to my male friends, especially those who have played sports, especially on a collegiate or professional level, they were like, that's just how men talk. So understanding that, and that's why I really wanted to wait before I replied, understanding that a lot of that joshing and challenging is just the way men communicate, just the way they talk to each other, just the way they challenge one another was, it, it helped me shift my perspective a bit. But so Jonathan was doing a lot to basically put out that Simone pursued him. Now, all three of the gentlemen who are hosted the Pivot Podcast totally respect the athleticism and the talent that is the phenom, the legend of Mrs. Simone Biles. And to them, I think they were trying to get him to humble himself, to acknowledge that his wife is an amazing legendary historic athlete and that can't be negated because th since they've all played on a professional level they can respect an olympian you know what i mean and i think that is something that there was an awareness that for me wasn't really there for jonathan so after that interview was over a lot of people watched it it got a lot of negative reactions and 
including, you know, I felt pretty, um, what's the right word I want to put to this? I felt a little frustrated with the interview myself. I wasn't mad at the host once I really understood that's just the way men rock with each other. I was really a little frustrated about the dynamic between Jonathan and Simone, but I have to remember they're both in their twenties. They're both, um, she's the goat. Okay. Let's just, she's the greatest right now. She is the greatest of all time in what she does at this point in time in history and probably will be for a very long time. And he is a professional athlete. And then inside the black community, there's another layer of reason for his arrogance. I would say it was, and feeling himself because he even said that he felt that men were a prize um, in the black community were very colorist. And he is a fair skinned man. And he also has, I believe, light eyes and he's a professional athlete. So in his mind, he is magnificent. Even if his playing record as compared to the other gentlemen who were hosting the podcast and as compared as an athlete to his wife, it's not like he's a six time Super Bowl winner. You know what I mean? It, it wouldn't, that would be the closest thing to a line to winning championships in his sport. He has not done that yet. I don't believe he's won any Super Bowl. So it was very interesting to see the grown men who were hosts trying to humble him a bit. And I think that comes from their wisdom and then seeing him kind of not get it. Like it, it I don't, I don't think he understood it and I don't think he got it. I chalk some of that up to just emotional immaturity. And he's a 28 year old pro athlete. So of course he thinks he's the cock of the walk, despite having a wife that is legendary, put it simply, she is the goat. To say that would be accurate. And there were a lot of things that were said where he was like, oh, I didn't even know who she was and all these things. A lot of people on social media did not believe that. The hosts themselves did not believe that. If you watch the podcast, you can kind of even see like Ryan Clark's face was like, dude, come on. And it was just a really interesting thing. And like I said, got a lot of people chatting, a lot of people talking, a lot of women very pissed off, especially black women. And it brought up a lot of points to me. So that's a little bit of background. Why I waited, like I said, I wanted to really assess my feelings on it, really assess my responses. I wanted to talk to my male friends as well as my female friends about their reactions to it. Um, Cause I have a grown, you know, I got grown people friends, some married, some single. And I wanted to get that insight and input to make sure I wasn't viewing things from too narrow of a perspective. And some things that were said from some of my male and female friends did challenge some of my initial takeaways. So that's why I waited one posted today in terms of learning from it. So what are some of the takeaways that I got from this? One of the main things I understood from this, let me take a step back. When we see things on social media, especially when it's celebrities, there were a lot of people saying, oh, they're grown, let them live their lives, they're happy. Absolutely, I wish them the best. But I would say when we observe things, as an independent third party of how celebrities are moving and interacting, um, how their relationships are going. A lot of times it is a combination and reflective of many of the social issues in relationships or dynamics, I'll say, in relationships going on today. And I think they gave us the perfect example. And not for us to judge what they're going to do because they're grown. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're married. She's going to ride by him. He's going to stick with her. That's what we're seeing right now. So this isn't about wanting anybody to break up or not be together. I wish them well and wish for them the best. But as a coach, number one, well, no, as an African-American woman who's actively dating, number one, and then as a relationship coach, number two, I've had a lot of takeaways. So I'll start with my takeaways as a coach. As a coach, the first thing I said was, how can I observe this situation objectively and glean lessons from it that I can impart to clients when I work with clients or use it as an example of positive or negative, you know, whatever I'm discussing. I really want to emphasize the importance of, as a part of your standards in dating, 
having a, wait, starting with you, yourself, because it's, you have to do the self-work first, having a level of maturity, emotional maturity, intellectual maturity, and spiritual maturity, that's whether you are religiously aligned or not. Those are important as some of the foundational elements of a healthy relationship. You first need to cultivate those things within yourself because when you don't have maturity in a lot of areas, it is going to lead to a lack of awareness. And where I saw that demonstrated in this um, interview was when the three hosts were kind of trying to shift like it back to Jonathan for him to see you are married to this woman who is such a magnificent athlete. And I don't even think it clicked to him because he was very much in an ego space of trying to defend his ego and how great he thought he was. I'm not here to take away from the fact that he is a professional athlete and that's not an easy feat to be pro regardless of if he is at the top of his sport he is still a professional athlete and that's not an easy feat to get there i think it's like 0.1 of one percent of um kids who want to go pro do go pro so he is already in a very small a very small set of men who get a chance to play professional football. I'm not taking that away from him. What I feel, and this is where the maturity comes in, and this is what the hosts were trying to direct him to, you, yeah, you got to this level and we've been where you're at. So I think that was a very leveling thing, but you, sir, will never be a great, as great of a football player as your wife is as a gymnast but Simone is still on another level. And I don't feel he could receive that. He could not receive kind of their redirecting attempts. And that's where some of the things I thought were a little like, mm, what's going on? And so my male friends kind of explained, like broke it down how they saw it. Like I said, especially friends who played sports at a collegiate or professional level, they were able to give me that insight. Jonathan, I think was a very good example of when you have a partner who lacks a certain level of maturity, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. I would say intellectually and emotionally, he was busy in an ego protection space and he wasn't able to receive the feedback that these three grown men were trying to give him. From a spiritual perspective, even if the way he told the story, which I don't think he was lying, was true, um, and I'm going to speak from like a Christian tradition because I was born and raised Christian. He was supposed to cover his wife. He, oh, excuse me. He was supposed to protect his wife. And I did not see that occur because he was so busy in this ego defending space when talking about her, where she had to speak up and was like, no, you know, you contacted me first. And it, it felt awkward. It felt very childish in some ways it felt like you had two young people honestly like high school students going back and forth about who liked who first and these are grown people these are grown people who are multimillionaires. so it was a little disheartening to see that lack of emotional intellectual and spiritual maturity from both of them but especially from him as her husband he didn't try to cover her he didn't have to go into all this and she drove to see me and and all these things I felt that was an attempt to salvage his ego and protect his ego and boost himself up in the presence of three men who have been exactly where he's at and have excelled at it. In fact, I believe Ryan Clark may have played the exact same position he did and Ryan Clark's a Super Bowl winner. You see what I mean? So I feel that that is what was on display in that example. I want to also emphasize the importance of making sure you and your partner are in alignment. From the exchange I saw between Jonathan and Simone and just kind of with the room, I don't think they're in alignment in some, some ways about how to talk about their relationship. And that's important of being on the same page. That's also an alignment in a lot of ways with maturity there because they don't have that and they will develop that, but it's an individual work. They both have to do within themselves before they can pour that into the relationship and pour that maturity, pour that covering, pour that protection. in. I, I felt that they were really not in alignment with that. And 
it's a great thing to observe because if you've ever been in a relationship like that, or you are in a relationship like that, where you think it's one thing and they kind of think it's another, that's a good takeaway because you don't want that. Now, 99% of us will never be reviewed, interviewed about our relationship. So that part is, that part doesn't matter. But the point is you may come into circumstances and situations where someone asks you or your partner or significant other, your spouse, whomever they are, about your relationship and they may say one thing that completely is like, mm, you're looking at them like, that's not what this is, or that's not what I thought we were, or that's not how I thought we came into this thing. And you might have a desire also out of ego to want to defend yourself or to, to speak your part on what really happened or how you two really came together. So great thing to observe. The next thing as a coach that I saw was I didn't see the, well, no, this relates to a background thing. I didn't see the spark there between them, but that everybody's dynamics are different. So I don't want to assess it on that. But because of the internet sleuths on social media, what came out was Jonathan Owens' ex-girlfriends have all not looked like Simone. Pretty much they've all been white. I do think that is something that I'll say this is both things as a coach, but also as an African-American woman, you need to be aware of, you need to understand what does, who do your partner's exes look like? If they don't look like anything like you, you need to ask questions or you need to proceed with extreme caution because, and I say this from all perspectives, that I'm operating in as a relationship coach, as an African-American woman, as a brown skin African-American woman who, who dates um, interracially, I'm not okay. And I've told white guys this for, I'm not here to be your training ground. I'm not here to be your testing ground. I am not here to be your social experience, your experiment or your black woman experience before you die. That's disgusting. That's a fetishist. So it is important for you to have an idea of who you the partners look like, what the partners look like of anyone you date. If they have a very diff, you know, very scattered background, they have exes that were all across the board. Um, I think that's healthier. That's what my dating history looks like. I have exes that have been light skin, brown skin, white, Hispanic. Like I have a very varied background. So anyone whom I'm dating and they would ask, They'd be like, oh, okay, she's okay, she's not pigeonholed into one type. No, because I date for compatibility and alignment. Um, of course, in terms of physical, the aesthetics, my two physical things are aesthetics. Aesthetics is hygiene and grooming and fitness, level of physical fitness. Those are the two physical things that are important to me. But other things, I, I don't care about that. I don't, I don't care about your ethnic or racial background. I am dating for the person who has compatibility and alignment with me. So if I'm meeting someone and say he's white or say he's light skin or brown skin or my same complexion, doesn't matter. And his dating history has one, women of one type or a type or types that are totally different than me. Like say I'm dating any guy, white guy, black guy, doesn't matter. And all of his exes are light skin or white or racially ambiguous. I'm not going to take him seriously and I am going to proceed with extreme caution and be extremely discerning and ask very hard questions to him. Like, why are you in my face? I'm looking at your exes and they look very different than me. Not one ex, all of them. So what, what are you trying to do? Do you think that because I'm brown, you, it's going to be easier for you to date? Are you seeking to try something new? Once again, I'm not here to be anyone's social experiment and neither should you. Do not tolerate that. That's a fetishist. That's disrespectful. Exit stage left or exit them stage left. It is very important to understand that. And I believe from what was brought out from the internet sleuths, Simone Biles is a beautiful brown skin woman. Beautiful skin. I mean, she has a gymnast frame. So she's like 4'11", I believe. Like, tiny petite, you know, amazing body. She can do 
pretty much anything because she, she's the goat in terms of gymnastics, in terms of flips and twists and all these things due to her level of athletic abilities. But his exes look very different than her. All of his exes to, from what I've seen are white or very, very light-skinned or racially ambiguous. That is to me and a lesson to me and that I've already known and reinforced to me, but something I would relate to clients is ask questions. I don't care if it makes them uncomfortable because you are not gonna sit there and allow them to make you uncomfortable because they wanna try something new. You're not here to be anyone's social experiment. You're not any, here to be anyone's fetish. That's disrespectful. So I think that's another thing that came up that kind of gave me pause. But once I learned that, that fed into some of the dynamics that I observed within their interview. Now let's move on to some things that I learned is just like, just a black woman. Um, the one overlapping thing was definitely understanding what someone's exes look like and how do you, do you fit their general, um, the general look of their exes? Do have, they seem very, very focused on one type. Do you fit that type and put the shoe on the other foot? If you do fit that type, say you look very, very similar to your man's exes. Well, A, you do know he's attracted to you. That is important. Attraction is important. I'm not going to negate that. But also you want to challenge that as well and say, hey, are you attracted to me as an individual, as a person? Or do you like me because I just look like your type and I check a box? So it's something to know what someone's exes look like is important because you want to ask questions both ways. If you look very different than their usual type, you need to ask questions. If you look the exact same as their um, type that they've dated in the past, you need to ask questions. Either way, you need to make sure your partner is with you because of who you are are as an individual, not because of some preconceived notion of that they have or some fantasy that lives in their head. Um, and it also can reveal a lot about your dynamics, whichever side of the fence, you know, applies. If you're not seeing that things line up as much as you would like in, term of, in terms of your relationship dynamics. So as a Black woman, another thing it taught me was attraction. So I just touched upon that. When when they were speaking and, and, and like I said, the guys were roasting them and then they kind of like laid off and went more into his football career. But I didn't see him being smitten with her the way she is smitten with him. Now, I think that's something to take note of and be aware of. The person that you date now, like I said, everyone shows things a little differently but that was my first perception of their dynamics when I saw them on camera. It is important to be attracted to your person. It is important for them to be just as attracted to you. There should definitely be a level of equality there. Just as if you should not completely negate attra attraction, physical attraction, of course, you shouldn't solely rely on it. There's people that have gotten into disastrous relationships only basing everything on looks. But looks are important. Let's not negate that. You are going to roll over and look at this person every morning. This is the person that you're going to be physically intimate with. This is the person that you're going to go through ups and down with. So attraction is a bonding component. It's an attractive component, of course. You know, you say, hey, you know, she looks cute. He looks cute, whatever. And it's going to first catch your eye. But true attraction is important. Physical attraction, but emotional attraction. Um, psychological attraction. Those are the things that I didn't see. So I would say when you get into a relationship with a person that is a good fit for you, this is the alignment and compatibility. Attraction is a part of that. Physical attraction is a part of it, but I'm talking about the emotional, psychological, intellectual. That's the part I didn't see between them because, you, and we've all seen them, like couples that are out and you're like, on the surface, you're like, mm, I don't know about that. But once you see them together, you see the way they click, you see the way they resonate, you see the way they vibe and you're like, I get it. Okay, I understand it. I did not observe that with them. Once again, I'm taking this from an interview. 
I could be totally off. I'm just talking about my observations and what I would want my clients to, to learn and observe and take away, but also what this reinforces to me and about how important that is. Um, I would say the last thing is just in general, try to keep your relationship private, not a secret. Okay. So like I said, 99% of us will never be interviewed about our relationships on a media platform. We, we not that fancy, we not that important and that's okay. But I feel that a lot of people want to be noticed. Social media has heightened this need for so many people who have that insecurity to heighten it, you know, to like, I gotta be seen, I gotta be seen, I gotta be seen. Keep your relationship private. The difference between private and secret meanings, private means operating like an, an adult. You know, you keep your business, your business. You're not posting everything you do on social media. You're not posting, you know, good, bad, and different fights. But like, you don't need to give people that type of access to your energy. And you don't need to let people know what's going on in your lives, unless it's people part of your close personal circle. Or if you are showing that, that's a part of like your brand for your business or something to do with your business. Um, but I would say, keep, your, keep a lot of your relationship off of social media. Now, someone keeping you a secret, they're hiding you. They're either ashamed of you or they shouldn't be with you because they are openly partnered with somebody else or something's going on. You're not here to be anybody's secret, but you are here to operate at a level of maturity where you don't need external validation about your relationship. And Simone did say that, that she doesn't care what, you know, people think and they're still together. And I agree, like with her, if she's comfortable with their dynamics, And the way that that whole thing works, I'm happy for. But for me as a takeaway, that's not a dynamic that I felt would be the best for most people. That's not a dynamic that I feel can operate in a spirit of growth and longevity. Um, And it's not me bad mouthing their marriage. This is just saying what I observe. That interview could have been a total miss, you know, misrepresentation of what's really going on. But the point is, from what we saw, we need to take away, oh, these are the things that were positive and these are the things that weren't so positive. Because those lessons are very important to just learn and understand how to operate when you go into your next relationship. And I'll leave the links below to some React videos, the, the, the main video itself from the Pivot Podcast. I'll leave a, a video, which was like a scene by scene kind of psychological breakdown of the men's dynamics, as well as the dynamics of Simone and Jonathan during the interview. Priscilla, the queen maker on her high power podcast did it. She is a very strong voice in the space of helping women understand how men operate and their tactics. I'll leave the link below in the description box. I also think it's very important to note that, you know, we're all just giving our opinions. You know what I mean? I know what I observed as a coach and the things I would take into client sessions. I know the things I observed as just a black woman that I'll take into my personal life or what reinforced things I already know in my personal life, et cetera. Um, another podcast that um, I saw where... I think Ostef had a really great, you know, just feedback about him saying that he was the prize. And it's just like, these are things that women need to be aware of and to listen to men's words. I think that's the final thing. Listen to men's words when they say them because they do mean what they're saying. Like he genuinely thinks that. And for a lot of the reasons that I just named, he would be considered a prize. It's just there was some lack of awareness there. And I believe that awareness is directly tied to defending ego and lack of maturity in certain areas. And I do wish them well, like I want them to win. I want them to make it, but I also really hope they reflect on this and use this as a learning point to improve their relationship. Use the feedback from that they've seen on social media and work on their connection. You know what I mean? Strengthen what they got going. So that's all for now. Um, 
Janelle. I am, like I said, a relationship coach who works with professional Black women, mainly 35 plus, who are seeking to date and partner more intentionally. Click the link below also in the description box to see my next five-day self-awareness and dating challenge to learn from your past patterns and behavior so you can date with more intentionality going forward. So until next video, that's all for now.